previous video, we took a look at what HTML5 is, where it came from, and why it's important. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the new updates and improvements to HTML5. The first thing that most people use in HTML5 is the doctype tag. The doctype is a declaration at the very beginning of an HTML or XHTML web page. It starts with an exclamation point and doctype in all caps. What comes next varies based on the type of document you are making. The words HTML and public appear after the doctype, and then there are two quoted strings specifying whether you're using HTML 4.01 or XHTML, and if you're using the transitional, strict, or frame set doctypes. Pretty much all of the doctype declarations are long, confusing, and practically impossible to remember. Doctypes are usually just copy and pasted or included as part of an HTML skeleton. While doctypes are difficult to remember and understand, they have served a very important purpose. In some browsers, their inclusion in the page will take the browser out of quirks mode and into standards mode. This is particularly important in Internet Explorer, where if you omit the doctype, you are left in quirks mode that retains the bugs and quirks from the older versions of Internet Explorer. Now this was useful for websites that would not break while IE began adopting more web standards. The doctype is also used to tell the browser which specification is being used on the page, though in practice it makes little difference. Browsers are built to be so robust and forgiving of errors that even if your markup isn't strictly adhered to the particular standard, your content will usually be displayed correctly anyway. Now HTML5's doctype is decidedly simple. It is just the doctype keyword and HTML. There are no public, no strings, and no confusion. It's just doctype HTML. This new streamlined doctype tells the browser that you're using HTML5 while still getting you out of quirks mode in older browsers. This new doctype is one of the most well-received changes in HTML5 and is already being used in some of the large websites, including Google. When working with script tags, you may be used to seeing the type attribute of text slash JavaScript, and maybe even a language attribute. Now the language attribute was deprecated some time ago in favor of the type attribute, so you should not be using the language attribute anyway. The type attribute declares what MIME type the script is, or rather, what type of file it is. Now more than 99% of the time, this is text slash JavaScript, because we're serving JavaScript. But in HTML5, the type attribute is no longer required in the script tag. If we remove it, the page just assumes that the type is text slash JavaScript, which means that in our script tags, we don't need any attributes, or maybe just the source attribute if we're referencing an external file. Now just like the script tag, the style tag also has a type of text slash CSS. And inside of our style tag, we can write CSS styles. Now, in HTML5, again, the type attribute is no longer required. If you have a style tag and some text inside of it, the browser already assumes that is type CSS. So we can just leave it out. But we're not going to be using any inline styles in this page. Finally, when we're including external style sheets using the link tag, we also used to include the text slash CSS. But now in HTML5, if we have the rel type of style sheet, the browser will assume that the type is text slash CSS. So there's one less thing we have to put in our link tags. When building web pages, you also want to specify the character encoding used on your page, typically UTF-8 or whatever your page happens to be encoded in. Now to declare this in HTML4, it would look something like this, with a meta tag of HTTP equiv being the content type, and then the type of text we're using as a HTML header. In HTML5, we can shorten this down to this. We just say meta with a car set of UTF-8, or whatever encoding scheme you want to be using. Again, this shows HTML5's preference for short, meaningful syntax over verbose, confusing syntax. In the next video, we're going to take a look at some of the new tags supported by HTML5, including asides, sections, and articles. Mm -hmm.